our saints. Uh, before we do that, let's take a moment and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that your grace is always with us. We thank you, Lord, that as we walk through trials and hardships that you walk with us. We thank you, Lord, that in all we do, your grace is sufficient. And I thank you for Greg and Tanja and the way that you've been leading them and directing them. And I thank you for their willingness to share today their story. And just ask, Lord, that you'll be glorified in all that is said and done. In Christ's name, amen. All right. This is uh, Greg and Tanja Cave, and they've been uh, attending here with us for a little bit. I'm going to let Greg just kind of tell us, how did you come to Clinton Grace? Um, can everybody hear me? Okay. All right, thanks. Um, as you know, some of you know, I... I uh, worked for Metro about 30 years and so, and there's a member that's here, he moved to Delaware, but Washington. And uh, we knew we both were believers, so when we were in our early years at Metro, we would always share stories, talk about the Lord and things of that nature. And uh, he told me he went here and he would always invite me. So I came, um, I would come maybe a couple, three times within the year and checked it out, and I really, really liked it. So I really liked it so well, I kind of struggled from where I was uh, worshiping. I said, man, I like to go to a church like that. Uh, so, uh, but as time went by, I retired in 2016. My wife and I started looking for another home. We moved down in Akakee, uh, which is, what, not a few minutes from here, 15, 20 minutes maybe. And, uh, now I'm a long way from the other church, and uh, I started coming up here on a regular basis. and said, hey, I'm only 15 minutes away. That'd be a long way. So I started attending, liked it more, and I just feel in my heart that God has already um, led me to join here, Grace, Grace Brother, and I'm, I'm happy to be here. And you were telling me 2017 was when you joined the church? Yes, 2017. Okay. Great, great. So he's been here a little bit. Uh, now, the reason we're talking today is because you had an event happen uh, last year, November 6, 2022. Tell us what happened. Um, I'm an avid uh, football player. I'm a Commanders fan, by the way, of all you Cowboys out there. <laughs> Born and raised in D.C., I got to support the home team. But, yes, last year, almost to this, uh, maybe uh, – couple weeks out, November the 6th of 2022, I, um, I was at a commander's game. I have season tickets and doing what I normally do. I am a photographer. I had my camera with me and I was taking pictures and taking videos and doing, just doing what I normally do at the, uh, at the game. And I told my son, hey, I'm going to go to the restroom. And out of nowhere, my son said, hey, I'm going to go with you. I said, what? I said, I can go. I'm a big boy. I can go to the restaurant by myself. So he went with me. I remember going up the steps. When I got to the steps, I never made it to the restroom. I don't, I don't remember anything. I, I, he said I fell back, and I, um, and I passed out. I had talked to um, Pastor Clark earlier. You know, you hear all these stories when... People say they died with the heaven and came back and all that. I passed out and I had no pulse. I wasn't breathing. Uh, my heart wasn't beating anything. So pretty much I stayed that way for about 10 whole minutes. And, um, and God being the great God that he is, uh, he allowed me to regain consciousness. Well, I don't think I regained consciousness, but they got my heart to beating again. And I, I kidded with... Uh, Pastor Clark, I said, you hear all those stories, so I just want to tell everybody here, I didn't take a trip to heaven and come back. I, I, I didn't see bright lights and all that. I kind of kidded with him and said, and by the way, if, if I went to heaven, why would I want to come back? <laughs> so I'm going to let my wife tell you what happened after that. Pretty much, um, they tore all my clothes off of me. They ripped the, my teeth out of my mouth on the left side. Haven't got it fixed yet. And um, so there's nothing I could do. I just laid there, and uh, my son was there. I, I don't know how uh, that could probably was pretty horrific for him. So uh, she can tell you some fill in, fill in the blanks from 
that point till I laid in the hospital for um, for three days uh, unconscious. So she can fill in other blanks. Uh, Greg actually sent me, you sent me a video. Mm -hmm. uh, they worked on you so long, they actually brought a machine in yeah. to do the CPR on you. Because yes, uh, right. again, they did CPR for 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And Tanju, you weren't at the game. How did you find out what was going on? My stepson, he calls, um, he said, T, um, Pops just had a seizure. I said, a seizure? I said, it don't sound right, but I'm on my way. So um, I get in the car. I had to um, FedEx field, and he calls me when I get toward about to BK Miller's, and he says, Pops don't have a, a um, heart rate. I'm like, oh my God, okay. And I'm, I'm panicking and driving, trying to get there. So he called me about two or three more times. He was like, T, please hurry. So I'm saying, I'm coming, I'm coming. Um, so I get to exit 17, usually the way I drop him off. And he said they have a a uh, heart um, beat. I was like, thank you, Lord. So we went to the hospital. They put us in a room, which I got real nervous because when you go in a room, I'm thinking the bad <laughs> part. But um, the doctor come in and said, we got him stable. Um, if anything hap if it happened again, what do you want me to do? I said, do everything you can <laughs> to save them. So, let me let me ask you this: As you got the call from your stepson, and you're you're driving there, what's going through your head? Praying, screaming. My daughter was, was with me, and she said I was driving fast. She was speeding. <laughs> <laughs> but um, just praying, just asking the Lord, please hold. I mean, I couldn't lose them because also my mom had five mini strokes. So I was I'm in between trying to take care of both of them now. So at the time Greg is having his answer, you've already been caring for your mother yes. for a little bit. So you're getting close to overwhelmed with yes. this. So Greg, they got your heart rate running again. They got you they got a pulse anyway. Um, how long was it before you Regain consciousness. Uh, I regained my consciousness. Um, I think three days later. So, I think they put me on cold packs to protect my vital organs uh, for 24 hours. Then another 24 hours, uh, they put in the heat to kind of re restore. So waiting for me to kind of come through. So it was a total of three days. Okay. And what memories do you have of the game? What memories do you have of the game and before the um, game? I tell you this, I have absolutely, positively no memories of that game. Now, I did videotape the half of the game. I shot pictures, and I got them home on my computer. I looked over many, many times. I remember nothing. And Tanja, as he's unconscious, the doctors are preparing you. What are they concerned about? What are they uh, wanting to see as he's sedated? Well, they was trying to figure out why his heart stopped. Mm -hmm. And right today, we still don't know. Okay. But. Okay. And there was a concern about his, uh, about his mental state as well, correct? Oh, yes. It was um, saying he could lose some of his memory. He would have to go to therapy. So um, when they woke him up, they asked him, um, <laughs> they asked him, are you married? He said, yes. He was like, um, what's your wife's name? And he said his ex-wife's name. <laughs> so, so I was like, oh, uh, hello? <laughs> and he was like, oh, no, that's my beautiful wife over there. That's Tanja. <laughs> great, great, great. So they were concerned that there would be a, a, a 
an altered mental state as a result of how long the heart had not beaten. Yes. Uh, now, when he came out, though, was there any sign of that? No. Okay. So. I remember everything. Okay. And <laughs> yeah, they were sharing with me the other day that when he woke up, he was alert and oriented as soon as he woke up. Mm. So after they released him from the sedation. Mm. Now, how long were you in the hospital, Greg? Uh, about three weeks. And we're still trying to find out exactly what was the cause of the original? Yes. Uh, I would solicit all the prayers of the saints because they still don't know. Um, and I was scheduled, and I did attend, I, went, I was scheduled to take an MRI, an extensive MRI. They wanted me to sit in the tube for about uh, an hour. Now, good, maybe somebody here shared the same fear. Now, I, I, I heard... I listened very, very closely to uh, Dr. Butler was it last week, and he said he had this fear, had to go through therapy and all that, because I, I am claustrophobic. I do not like being closed in. So he was saying he had went through the therapy and he prayed about it. I had already been praying about it. Um, and a week before, I went there and tried to test it out. It didn't work. I, they rescheduled me, came back, and prayed about it. My wife told me, you, you're real anxious this week. <laughs> she said, calm down. So I did go on uh, Friday, and again, I could not go through it. <laughs> so I would ask you all to pray for me. But they have another uh, method uh, or way to try to find to get pictures of my heart. It's kind of intrusive where they go in through the, uh, you know, that area, and they take a, um, a camera and come all the way up. They can do that. It's, it's more expensive, too, than a regular MRI. So I said, well, I got health insurance, so let them pay for it. So I would ask you to uh, pray for me that everything goes fine, that they'll find out what's wrong. And not only that, uh, can they fix it once it goes wrong? So I think that was one of the things that I struggled with most. Uh, I'm almost 70 years old right now, but years ago I was a pro fighter in, in, in karate. And that was one of my biggest struggles. There's no history of heart failure, heart attacks, heart problems in my family. I have a very large family. So I kind of struggled. I said, well, what's going on? Why, why my heart? I wouldn't, and my wife would tell you, I wouldn't accept it for a while. I said, well, maybe I passed out because uh, my heart, my, you know, I mean, I had uh, high blood pressure, something like that. And uh, then uh, this past July, I had another episode, and I have a defibrillator in my chest, and it's supposed to shock you and keep the heart from beating real fast and all that. And then when that episode happened in July, because I went from November all the way to July, I was feeling fine, thinking, uh, I don't have a bad heart, you know. So it, it uh, shocked me, and I had to go back, and I stayed, I think, what, four days, four days this time. So that's when I uh, accepted the realization that uh, I do have a uh, heart problem, so it was hard for, for me to accept and the struggles I went through. So the good Lord was telling me, well, uh, just like uh, you can't accept the physical heart problems, he said, well, I fix spiritual hearts too, right? So I just went through a, a, a process. Okay. That. And that leads me to the next question. Uh, you guys went through a trial, a long, a long trial. You're still walking through the trial. How has God been sustaining you through this? Your turn. Your turn. I just finished, sweetie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, She's getting nervous now, so I help her out a little bit. Uh, but I would like to say from the outset that uh, I couldn't have a more wonderful wife. Now, I had gotten married earlier, and wasn't smart about it. I didn't, I didn't have the counsel of the Lord and things like that. Made a bad mistake, but uh, I thought I would never get married again. I stayed single for 12, 11 years, and uh, the good Lord uh, led me to Tonja. So I think for me, the trial through all of this, I mean, she's been there every step of the way. And I thought I was a big boy, you know? I thought I can do a lot of things by myself. Oh, I'm okay, but I tell you, you, you when you uh, have the right woman, you know, it's like you find uh, 
you as a man, you, you see a lot of, you see your weaknesses, but yet that weakness, she comes alongside of me and just builds me up. So as a result, I just spent a lot of time this last year just really loving on my wife. And what lessons do you feel like God's been teaching you as you walk through this? Well, um, at the end of the day, I trust in, uh, I was just a great athlete at one time in my life. I didn't have health problems. And at the end of the day, you can't go back on any of these physical things. You just got to trust God for everything. At the end of the day, he's sovereign over everything. You know, man can, uh, he, he can make plans, but God's going to direct your steps at the end of the day. So I think for me, it was more about just uh, trusting the Lord. Ms. Tanja. <laughs> Ms. Tanja warned me she, didn't, she, she wasn't looking forward to being up here, but she's doing a great she's job. Shy. She's shy. <laughs> great. Um, how, how can we as the body of Christ continue to encourage you and support you um, I'm sure people here were praying for me because I know I, you know, it wasn't just my prayers and my wife's prayers. Continue to pray for me. Anything that uh, you had me to do, ask me. Don't be afraid. Um, uh, so I think uh, just uh, I'm just happy to be here. I mean, I knew I wanted to be here when I was visiting when Bud was here, and uh, and then how the Lord led me to move down this way, and I was like. Okay, I put it in your path. But I would like to also say that um, I really do appreciate uh, Pastor Clark so much because um, he was right there, came to see me, he called me, checked on me, and that meant so much to me. And just had the support of the ministry and, and just to talk to him. I mean, it just really, really, Pastor Clark, you don't know. That was very much that, that meant to me. So, just allow me to continue to come here, and wherever you need me or can use me, well, it's fine with me. Well, we were talking the other day, Greg shared something as well that I'm, I'm going to share. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, that you're learning dependence on God Amen. and trusting God's sovereignty and how much comfort there is in knowing that we serve a God who's in control of all things. And as we were talking the other day, he said, I would love for the church to understand that the God we serve is in control and cares. So, right. Let's pray. If you guys would please join with me as we pray for Tanja and Greg and just their continued walk as they go through this time. Lord, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you that you truly are in control. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done here. Lord, we know that this restoration is an act of you. Um, we know this defies what a lot of medical professionals would expect, but we thank you for the way that you've superintended and directed and protected and for bringing Greg back. And Lord, we thank you for the way that he has walked through this with his wife Tanja and their kids, trusting you each step of the way. And we thank you, Lord, that when we place our trust in you, we'll never be put to shame. And we ask, Lord, you help us as your body to come alongside, to encourage, to help. But we ask most of all, Lord, in the days ahead, as has already happened in the days behind, that your name will receive glory and honor by the way that you walk them through this time and the way that you help us come alongside and help them. All this we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you guys so much for sharing. I know this was a tough, but we really appreciate you sharing what God is doing in your life. We love you, and we're so glad you're here. Thank you.